Good evening, Great Britain. Um, I'm Mr Spires, I'm the head of sixth form at Sheldon School and I'm going to talk to you for the next 15 minutes or so about um, what we have to offer here and why we think it's a really good option for your sons and daughters to join us here. Um, on the screen at the moment you can see um, who is with us tonight. I'm Eugene Spires, the head of sixth form. We've also joined by Grace and Niraz from Year 13 and Luke from Year 12. Um, who will be available to answer questions later and Grace and Niraz are going to talk to you a little bit about their experience too. Um, obviously it's a little bit weird, I would, I would hope to be welcoming you tonight to into the hall and um, for a big open evening so you can um, speak to teachers and speak to students and really get a flavour for what we do in the sixth form. Um, we're going to try and capture kind of the, the key points for you this evening and give you the opportunity to answer, ask some questions. Um, here's a brief overview of, of tonight. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the subject information sharing in just a moment, but then we'll go into um, why Shower Six Form is um, a really good option for your sons and daughters, um, what happens next, and then some questions at the end. Um, just in terms of the subject information sharing, ordinarily on this evening I would speak to you in the hall and then you would go off and you would experience um, presentations from different subject areas. Obviously, that's not happening this evening. Um, so that information is going to be shared in a number of ways. So there are already um, faculty videos available on the website um, to find out about different faculty areas, but specific subject areas will also be talking to students, year 11 students in their lessons um, about what A-level content is covered and what, what A-level options are like in their subject area. Um, and we'll also, they may be doing some other videos in addition, and I've been into Year 11 careers lessons to talk about some of those options too. Um, but it's also important, and I'll come back to this later, that students and, and parents do some research about what um, students might be planning to do afterwards, so they can factor that into their choices for subjects as well. Uh, I'll mention a bit more about that later. Um, First of all, here's some kind of key points really about what our sixth form has to offer and what makes it such a, a good environment to be in. Um, first of all, the, the superb pastoral support. Lots of you will have sons and daughters in the school already, and you'll know that um, unusually, it's a, a unique feature, certainly in the schools that I've worked in, that um, we have a um, one-to-one -one system of tutoring. So not only do students see a tutor morning and afternoon, but they also have time throughout the year to meet their tutor on a one-to-one -one basis, which means obviously their tutor gets to know them very well, and can talk about the future and support them through their school time. Well, that continues into the sixth form. So the students have that continuing brilliant pastoral support into the sixth form. We also have our own pastoral support worker in um, the People's Support Office, um, which I'll mention again in a moment. Um, excellent progression from year 11. Um, lots of our students um, come into the sixth form, somewhere between 60 and 65 percent of students, which is above national average. Um, and the students that don't stay tend to be the ones who go to college for courses that we don't offer, um, and more about the course that we offer um, in a moment. Once the students are here, they tend to stay. So our retention from year 12 into year 13 is very high. Um, uh, so largely, once the students are on their courses with us, they stay. Um, very successful in terms of results, and I'm going to talk a bit more about that a bit later. Um, and as you can see there, on our 2019 results, it puts us um, in the top 20% in terms of value added. So in terms of where the starting points were for students and the progress they made, we're in the top 20% um, nationally. Um, and our curriculum, our curriculum is a really, really strong feature of the sixth form. We offer over 35 subjects in the sixth form, 35 different courses. So students have a very broad range of subjects to choose from. Uh, and, and again, there'll be lots more information about that through um, lesson time and our new course booklet and prospectus, which is available on the website this evening. Um, and lastly, but certainly by no means least, the, the enrichment that, that takes place in the sixth form. I remember some of my lessons from sixth form, um, but I definitely remember all the enrichment um, activities, the sport and the productions and the trips and all that sort of stuff. And um, I think that's a, a really, really valuable part of the sixth form experience as well. Um, so a little bit more about the, the, the pastoral support really, um, because I know that before you get into kind of being able to work hard for your exams and get involved in the enrichment, you want to know that um, parents and students want to know that they are kind of safe and supported and secure. And so there's lots and lots of support available to sixth form students. Um, and as you can see from the slide that's up now, kind of the students are the centre of this and there's lots of support available around them, whether it's academic support from subject staff 
whether it is pastoral support from our pastoral support worker in the pupil support office, or whether it is kind of medical things on a day-to-day -day basis from the school nurse, learning support from our learning support faculty, um, for you know, uh, learning needs that, that are identified. There's a whole package of support around our students, including that one-to-one -one tuition throughout the year. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about aspiration, really, and, and destinations. Um, ordinarily, this time of year, I will be talking about um, kind of where the students from this summer have gone, and I can do that to, to an extent. We've, we've sent one student off to Oxford, um, and there are students who have gone off to do a, a whole variety of university courses around the country, um, and also to some really, really aspirational apprenticeships, degree and higher level apprenticeships. Um, but these statistics are from 2019 because for various reasons, I'm sure you would have caught in the news, um, lots of um, uh, disruption this year. And so some students are still working out where they're going with that gap years, etc. Um, so although we celebrate and commend the great results from the students in the summer, and most of them have gone on to do the things that they wanted to do, um, these are the results from 2019. And as you can see, um, nearly three quarters of our students have gone off to university, and that is roughly speaking the same proportion from year to year. There's been an increase in recent years of those students choosing to do apprenticeships, higher degree level apprenticeships. And this year um, we sent students to, um, a student's gone over to relocate to Belfast to start a, an apprenticeship with PwC, another one's in a cyber security apprenticeship locally. Um, so there's a whole full range of um, amazing destinations that our students go on to. Um, in terms of enrichment, there's lots and lots of stuff, as I've, I've already alluded to. We do lots of amazing fundraising, like Strictly Sheldon. Um, there's um, six form PE. There are six forms you get involved in lots of school productions. Um, and that's at the heart of what we what we like in our, in our six form and what we're trying to promote is that it's not just about the learning. The six form experience is much broader than that. Um, the core enrichment that everybody is entitled to, everybody will have, lots of things here I've already talked about a little bit already in terms of pupil support and tutor support. Um, but just to highlight a couple of other things here really, which is the 18 plus options programme. Um, literally from day one in year 12, um, we start talking to students about what they're going to do when they leave the sixth form. And for lots of students, they haven't got a clue and that's fine. That's why we start the conversation early. And for those who really do have an idea and have had for some time, then we support them to achieve what it is they're trying to do. Um, and uh, along the same lines, we also do work experience um, at the end of year 12 in a normal year. And we still aim to do that next summer where possible. Um, another really key part of our enrichment is our electives program. So most students will choose to start on three courses and they will then have um, electives um, enrichment activities in addition to that. Um, this makes them more attractive to universities and employers, but also it, it adds lots to their skills and to their enjoyment. So um, core maths and the EPQ are two qualifications that carry UCAS points um, that are increasing in popularity. The EPQ is a large independent project um, which they can do on almost any topic they want um, and it's worth half an A level. Um, the skills that they develop through this are the skills that universities love and are really, really useful for doing their A-levels anyway, independent research, um, referencing, that sort of thing. Core Maths is aimed at those students who want to continue to do some maths beyond GCSE level, um, possibly because of a career path that they're, they're, they're choosing to follow, but don't want to or, an, or are unable to do A-level maths. Um, so it is kind of more practical, hands-on um, uh, vocational maths. Um, and those two qualifications, EPQ and Core Maths, will gain you UCAS points. Most of the other, all of the others here don't carry UCAS points, but they are about developing skills, enhancing your CV, and um, kind of having other great opportunities. Um, BSL is British Sign Language. Students are um, learning that in school. Again, not necessarily for a qualification, but to develop their skills. Um, and a, a MOOC is a massive open online course. Lots of students during lockdown, for example, have been doing free online learning from some of the best universities in the world to enhance their UCAS applications or just because they're really interested, um, but also show to the university their commitment. If your sons and daughters have never done any Duke of Edinburgh award, they can start in the sixth form and complete the gold. Um, and I think Grace Nero may mention that a bit later. Um, and a couple of years ago when I started here, I emailed staff and asked them about what enrichment activities they could offer that would kind of stand out, that would be a bit different. And uh, Russian was one of them. 
and so we've got several students in the school a class of students who are doing conversational russian once a week um, just because they're interested and just because it's something different and just because they're wanting um, Okay, I'm going to take a breather um, and I'm going to hand over to Grace and Iraz now. Um, Grace and Iraz are in year 13 um, and you can see here what they're studying and what they're hoping to go on to study at university. I'm going to hand over to them to talk to you for a couple of minutes about their experience at the sixth one. Hi, I'm Iraz and I'm Grace and we're the student presidents as Mrs Spires mentioned. Um, our role is to ensure that um, each pupil feels safe and happy and listened to. Uh, we understand that the transition from secondary to sixth form can seem daunting. However, we believe that here in the sixth form, the teachers accommodate every individual to seamlessly adapt to sixth form life. Um, I believe students can also do this by throwing themselves at every extracurricular that Sheldon has to offer. Uh, for example, rising up to the challenges of DV Gold, which me and Grace are both involved in and uh, getting stuck in with the early productions. Um, I think my favourite so far has been Sheldon Strictly, so yeah. On feedback from our external students, uh, this has been proven to be hugely beneficial in breaking the ice and forming friendships. Um, the step up is also made a lot smoother with the facilities available here, um, including the common room and the study area, which have helped us to grow in independence and prepare us for our post 18 opportunities. Um, in terms of post 18 opportunities, Sheldon also offers a lot of um, enrichments to tailor to the individual. Um, for example, Joe Brown, our careers uh, advisor, has been a huge asset in helping us explore the paths available to us after A levels. So that could be with university or apprenticeships. Uh, on top of this, within the current situation, it has been important to both Eras and I that um, the school have noticed and actioned a clear support system to prioritise us as students throughout these difficult times. Um, I think as you, as everyone knows, the hot topic for Year 13s is UCAS applications and cover letters for apprenticeships. Um, these have been hugely helped by all the teachers, tutors and head of years to ensure each student is broadcasting their achievements and abilities. Uh, so, all in all, um, we are incredibly proud to be a part of the warm and successful community here at Sheldon. Um, I think we are really certain that your sons and daughters, like me and Grace and so many others, will thrive and enjoy their Sheldon Six One experience. Thank you very much. Um, back to you, Mrs. Bowles. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Thank, fantastic, thank you. Um, it just reminds me of something I want to say, which is in terms of UCAS, today is the deadline for the early entrants who have applied for Oxford and Cambridge and medicine and best in science, etc. Um, and we've sent off um, lots of good, happy, but slightly nervous applications today um, and over the recent weeks. Um, so some of those have already gone and lots of others are working on those right now. Um, more of the students later, that depends on which questions we get in. I just want to mention a bit more about enrichment really. I'm not going to talk through everything that's on the current slide, but a couple of things I wanted to um, kind of highlight here, because lots of them speak for themselves. The expedition at the top, um, we're really lucky here. There's been a long tradition of six formers kind of um, uh, going on expeditions, kind of a mini gap project, if you like, at the end of their um, time or in the summer between year 12 and year 13 or at the end of year 13. Um, so students recently went to um, Zanzibar, uh, year 25, year 12. Uh, last summer went to Zanzibar for two weeks and worked in a school. And at the same time, there were um, about 12 year 13s were in Cambodia and Vietnam. And what we usually try and do is in July on induction day, we try and launch that so that students have got a, a long lead in to try and do fundraising and um, you know, work to save the money for that. And we hope that by the time we get to July next year, we'll be able to do exactly the same for your sons and daughters. Um, the other one that I want to highlight from here really is the Sheldon Scholars. Sheldon Scholars is a group that we identify early on and that we meet uh, regularly throughout the two years. There are those students who are already um, aspiring to those really competitive university courses and competitive universities and apprenticeships. Um, those who are applying for the early deadline often for UCAS, so Oxford and Cambridge, Medicine, Dentistry, veterinary science, etc. Um, but also other students are aspiring to other competitive universities and apprenticeships. We meet regularly to talk about what that means and what you can be doing a year or 18 months ahead of those applications to really improve that. So, you know, wider reading and um, critical thinking, etc. Um, in terms of achievement, um, again, this is a result from 2019, um, uh, which was a good year. And like I said earlier, um, students um, 
made very good progress from where they come into the sixth form, which put us into the top 20% in terms of um, value added, the progress that students have made from their starting points. Um, generally, students do perform very well and go on to um, a whole variety of courses at universities and apprenticeships, as, all, as I've already mentioned. And despite the, the results um, kind of uh, issues in the summer, most of our students did go on to the universities that they aspired to this summer to. Um, one other thing in terms of results is, again, in terms of the, the updated prospectus and course booklet, which is now live on the Sixth Form area of the website, there is a page in the prospectus which has got a breakdown of um, the results from 2019, subject by subject in terms of um, grades achieved. So if you're looking at subject specific grades, that is in the prospectus, which is available on the website. Um, entry requirements in the curriculum. Um, entry requirements um, are essentially students need to meet the entry requirements that they have for the individual subjects, for the subjects they want to do basically. So it does vary from subject to subject. Um, for example, A level maths is a, you need to get a seven at GCSE maths. Um, but broadly, most of our subjects are fives and sixes. It does vary a little bit, but individual subjects do have different entry requirements. So some may require, if you've done the GCSE, that you need to get a five or six in it, but they may also require an, a pass in English and maths. But essentially our entry requirements are check the subject entry requirements in the course booklet on the website and then you need to meet the entry requirements for the subjects you want to study. Um, most students will start on three subjects um, and then fill their other time with studying, study periods and those elective and enrichment opportunities. Um, there may be an opportunity for some students to, to do four, um, but that'll be on a case by case basis. And the, the default is for three because Broadly speaking, that's enough for anybody. Um, the most competitive universities and apprenticeships only want you to get three good A-levels. And so we think it's better to concentrate on doing that and build the other enrichment and skills that make you stand out from other candidates. Um, in terms of what happens next, so research and subject information is really important. I mentioned earlier about researching not just what is on the A-level um, kind of specifications, that's important, having those conversations with teachers and checking your school email regularly because people may be emailing stuff out and, um, and or we may email out that there are videos available, that sort of thing over the coming weeks, but also researching beyond that. If you know you want to be a midwife or you know you want to be a teacher or you know you want to be something in particular, then doing research on university websites about which, which A-levels you should be picking because um, it, it's better to get that right now. Um, it's possible to make changes later, but it's easier to get it right now. Um, the application deadline is the 14th of December before Christmas. We do take later applications, but there are some subjects that are really popular and fill up quickly. And so I highly recommend that you meet that deadline of the 14th of December. Um, if you are somebody who's new to Sheldon School um, and um, we have, we, have a, we have a day in January where you can come in and you can actually um, walk around the school. We will put on some activities where you can meet some students, talk to some staff and have a tour of the school. Um, and um, we'll be in touch after today to um, uh, before then to kind of confirm the details of that. But let us know if you are one of those families that want to um, come in on that day. Parents are welcome. It's usually just students, but parents are welcome because uh, I know you want to know that um, whether, where your sons and daughters are going to spend two years of their lives. Then basically what happens is in January, we also do individual discussions. Those are deliberately called individual discussions, not interviews, because if you meet the entry requirements for the subject, then essentially that's your kind of entry into the sixth form. The discussions in January are, are really more of a careers interview, really, to talk about other things that you want to do in the sixth form, going to actually get you to the, what you want to do post 18. Um, and if you don't know what you want to do post 18, are you keeping your options open? Um, so it's it's more of a career discussion, but those take place individually with a member of the sixth form team in January. And then in July, um, we hope to have a normal induction day um, back in place where they'll you meet your tutor, your, your sons and daughters will meet their tutor, they'll meet the other people in their tutor group. They will have taster sessions of the A-levels they think they're going to do. And some students may change their mind at that point, um, but it's a real insight into what A-level study is going to be like. And then obviously the six form team around on results day to support and to give guidance. And some students will do much better than they hoped and will um, want to change their mind. And some will have not done as well, will want to change their mind. And we're there to support that process from results day 
right into the beginning of September. Okay, I'm going to pause for a moment and um, have a scan of the questions that have been coming in. That's kind of that's my presentation. Um, I'm going to look at the questions that have been coming in and see if we can involve Luke because I'm conscious that I've asked Luke to come this evening and um, he's here to answer some questions. So I'm going to go to questions now. If you think of any other questions as I'm talking, um, uh, you can click on the um, text or chat box. I think it's in the top right hand corner for most people. Um, and you can ask questions there live, which will should appear in front of me. So I'm going to get to those questions now. Um, uh, do children need to get a minimum grade in their GCSEs to be ex accepted into the sixth form? Um, yeah, I kind of alluded to that a little bit. It, it does vary from subject to subject. Um, and so, for example, I teach sociology. We accept students um, with a four in English. But at the other end of the scale, you need to get a seven to do A level maths. Um, so it does, yeah, it does vary from subject to subject. And then, so there are minimum grades expected. Those minimum grades are there really not because we wouldn't like to say everybody can stay in the sixth form. It's to kind of support those students to be successful. We know that A level is tough. These guys will testament, be a testament to that soon. That A levels di are difficult, and three is enough for anybody. Um, and we don't want to take students onto courses and set them up to not do very well. Um, so absolutely, we, we there are minimum entry requirements. Um, uh, question for Luke. Um, what have you enjoyed most so far about sixth form? So Luke is um, nearly one term into his sixth form experience. So what have you enjoyed the most about your sixth form experience, Luke? Um, I think there's a, there's a couple of things to mention, as Monroe mentions. Um, I think what I've just really loved um, about the sixth form is just doing the subjects I love and I, I love doing it at a high level of, um, of doing it at A level. Um, I love working with my teachers um, more, seeing them more and doing more work outside of lessons more independently. Um, but I think what Sheldon really shines at and what Sarah alluded to in his presentation um, was just the, the encouragement and the, um, the sort of enrichment of the opportunities outside of lessons and the electives that um, are so unique to the school um, and doing things like the Sheldon Scholars, um, I've applied for access to Bristol, and I think um, I think the school just goes the extra mile to ensure that um, that your sixth form experience isn't just about studying; it's not just about the academics. It's about so much more and enriching, um, and making sure that the people has the best experience for the set them up for the future. Brilliant, thanks, Luke. Um, so, um, other questions that have come through. So, do students um, have to always take three A levels? Um, that is the norm, um, and if uh, and, and that's kind of followed up by a question about can students um, take two A levels? Um, two A levels uh, for me, education is always about each level of education is about opening up opportunities to the next thing, and so um, three A levels is what opens most doors, and so the vast majority of students will start on three, and I would say if there are students who are for, for whatever reason thinking about starting on two. Um, I think the conversation we would have in January is about actually aiming to start on three and then if necessary there is the possibility of dropping down to two but it just limits options so much for students beyond that that most almost all university courses want you to do um, uh, want you to have three um, almost all of the apprenticeships that are out there now want you to have three and so that is really the norm for most students. Um, but like I say, we, we, I, I can have those conversations with individuals um, when we come to January. Um, other end of year 12 exams that have to be passed before moving on to year 13. Well, for Luke, but there wasn't for these guys. Um, and it's not quite as simple as, um, as that. I mean, we do have end of year 12 exams, but in terms of what they need to be passed to move on to year 13 is, is I mean, if a student is, uh, you know, failing uh, an exam in a subject, and I mean by by that getting a U grade and ungraded, then we will have a conversation about whether this is really the right path for them, um, or whether that is really the right subject for them. If they are failing across the board, then we might talk about whether the sixth form is the right place for them. It's very rare that we get to that position because our processes now are, are, are really good, and because our support throughout the time of the sixth form is really good. It's, it's rare that we get to that position. Um, and if a student just scrapes a pass or, you know, then we support those students. They, we're committed to those students and we do what we can to improve um, what the position they're in and to continue into the second year and do the best they can. Um, what arrangements are there if students need to boost their GCSE grades by taking reset? 
Um, essentially, in a normal year, the only resets that you can do are English and maths, and that opportunity happens. That that's not in any normal year pre-COVID. And what happens is um, there is this time of year, kind of October, November time, students have the opportunity to retake retake English and maths um, because the government say that you have to get um, a four in uh, at least a four in those. And we do offer English and maths resit classes. Some some schools and universities, uh, some sorry, some schools and colleges will let you take the exam, but don't actually support you with resit classes. We do. Um, obviously, if you haven't got your English and maths or English or maths, it's going to limit some of the things you can choose in the sixth form anyway. But you do have the opportunity to resit um, maths and English in the November and again in the summer if necessary. Um, I've covered one of those questions, which is, is it possible to get a breakdown of past results? So 2019 results are in the updated prospectus, which is now live on the website. Um, a question for the students. Oh, OK, what is the hardest aspect of being in sixth form? Let's go for all of you. Uh, I personally would say motivation, especially I think coming back as well, like trying to do A-levels on top of everything else and making yourself look so glorious to the universities is a lot. Um, but I think teachers help with that a lot because teachers want you to look and do your best. Um, but on top of that as well, they want you to be feeling your best because you will do best in your A-levels if you enjoy and want to do them. So I think the motivation is probably the toughest thing, but that's not, that doesn't have to be in town you can get motivation from elsewhere. Um, for me, it probably minus the whole COVID situation, um, the like transformation between um, year 11 and year 12 is very big. Um, you have to be independent, um, but the atmosphere in the sixth form is so lovely. It's, um, it's really helpful because everyone is on the same boat. No one is experienced in year 12 to the horrors of A levels, but um, really children six form is so great. Uh, with the teachers are so accommodating in every aspect of whether that's lessons, whether that's well-being. Each teacher is up for a, uh, up for a talk. Um, in terms of motivation and stuff like that as well, there's a lot of enrichment stuff that you can get stuck in with and help make the transition a lot smoother. Um, which has made me feel like a lot more at home here. And yeah, it's been great. It's, I've really enjoyed it here. Brilliant, thank you. Look, um, I think just sort of building on um, what Grace and Ryan said, I think um, for me, because it's my first term, I haven't had the whole um, the whole year yet, but um, I think just, it's a bit obvious, but the workload, it is a step up from GCSE. Um, but I think the best way to approach it is to be adaptable and to approach the work in a different way. So, um, after the GTSC, it will be your set homework. Um, you can pick the homework and you're normally fine. Um, and you revise for exams and that's that. Um, but A-level, I think you're, um, it's the big sort of ethos of encouraging you to go beyond the classroom to make sure that you revise everything in lessons. And it is a lot more content. Um, but what I would say is that um, we are given study periods um, quite a few a week um, that if you utilise them really well, um, you can easily stay on top of your A-levels whether you're doing three or four. And, and what I would say is um, the teachers are really passionate about their subjects they do and they and they are more than happy to help stay after class and whatever to help you um, to understand things that maybe you don't understand or to get a bit of um, extra advice on, on part of your subject. So I think the workload is a challenge, but um, it's something that's very much achievable if you uh, are able to adapt to the new and sort of sick form of life. Brilliant, thank you. Um, it's obviously something we, 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 we're really knowledgeable about in the a levels are tough, but we're, we, you know, we're, we've got lots of experience in supporting that. Um, is PE compulsory as my child doesn't want to do PE? Um, PE is on Wednesday afternoon. We do six form PE, and um, uh, yes, it is in the sense that we know that uh, post sixteen activity levels plummet, um, and we think that it's really good for their physical well being and really good for their mental well being. And in ordinary times, year 12 and year 13 mix in that, which I think is really good for the kind of that atmosphere that these guys have talked about in the sixth form. What I would say to people that don't like PE is that it's not PE in the sense of forcing everybody to do stuff they don't want to do. 
Um, each term, our brilliant P team put together a whole range of options that students choose from. So students who want to take part in team sports outside in the rain, for example, can, but those students who really don't like um, sport at all can um, use the fitness suite or um, can uh, do yoga or fitness classes or Zumba or table tennis or you know the whole range of things that are put on offer each term which students choose from so um, that's what I would say is that yes some, some activity on a Wednesday afternoon is compulsory but there's a full range of options for students who don't like taking part in kind of you know, sport or in a traditional sense. Um, it looks like you, do, you can do a combination of courses, is that correct? Yes, it is absolutely correct. Um, at college, you would only take one BTEC, so is it possible to take more than one at school? How does that work? Uh, basically, in the um, uh, course booklet that you can find on the website now, um, it, it details the 35, uh, roughly 35 subjects that we have on offer. And um, as long as the timetable allows that to happen, um, you can choose pretty much any combination. Um, we will, in the discussions in January, have conversations about some um, kind of guidance around that. So, for example, if a, if a student is choosing three subjects that are very similar, then we might have a conversation about whether that's really a wise thing to do because they're really narrowing down their post-18 options. But if they're really clear about you know, what their post-18 options are and that's OK, then um, that's what those conversations in January are for. So, yes, you can do a combination of um, uh, three subjects for most students. Um, this one kind of links to that. My child is really keen to do the criminology diploma you offer along with two A-levels. Will this mix of diploma and A-levels still enable her to go on and study for a degree at university? Yeah, absolutely. So what we have done as we've added in kind of um, uh, non-traditional subjects, if you like, or those that aren't kind of uh, traditional A-levels, things like criminology or music technology or um, things like that, as we've added those into our curriculum mix, we have always um, made sure that they um, carry the same uh, sort of UCAS points. So they're all level three subjects, and so they carry the same UCAS points. Um, and actually one of our fantastic students from this year um, who got straight A stars um, did absolutely that, she was doing criminology and two other subjects. She got straight A stars and has gone off to do, um, I think a criminology thing in Birmingham. Um, so yes, absolutely that can happen. Um, um, is it possible to do four A levels? Um, yes, it's still possible. Um, we've moved all schools um, in the country have, have, have largely moved away from that as a, as a default. Um, largely because, as I said earlier, most universities, most apprenticeships want you to get three good A levels. And as these guys have, uh, have attested to here, doing A levels is tough, and um, there's no getting away from that. And so. Um, having more study time, you know, focusing on three, having more study time and time for enrichment um, is the best way to go for the vast majority of students. Can some students do four? Absolutely, if it's the right thing to do. So again, in those conversations in January, um, if you've got the grade profile and the entry requirements and you've got a really good argument for wanting to do four, then absolutely though that's a possibility that that is that is possible but for most students the default will be three plus enrichment um, how do students apply um, uh, there is uh, an application form which again is on the website um, unfortunately at the moment you still have to download it um, and fill it in but then you can take a picture of it and email it back um, so that's the simplest way or if you're a shower student already then you can download it fill it out and bring it to the sixth form office um, which is the first or on the left as you come into the sixth form centre. Um, my child is currently elsewhere and considering sixth form at Sheldon, would a late application in January affect their chance of getting in? Um, no, I'm not, not in terms of getting in, no. And like I say, meeting the deadline in December helps us to plan to start kind of working on the curriculum and a, and a timetable. Um, but it, and like I said, getting it in early will. Um, be better for making sure you get the choices of subjects you're after, but it certainly wouldn't stop you entering the sixth form at all now. Um, if a subject is oversubscribed, how are students selected? Um, it's a combination of things really. One is um, if somebody's met the deadline or not, that, that does play a part because if somebody is committed to a subject and they meet the deadline, you know, it's unfair if somebody changes their mind on results day and wants to enter that subject. Um, but also um, if there is competition for places in a subject where everybody met the deadline, then 
we may look at the grades that student got got um, but for most of our subjects that tend to be popular we, we do have more than one group so we have um, you know uh, two or three maths groups we have um, two or three psychology groups um, we do tend to have um, multiple groups of our, our popular subjects so it, it tends not to be an issue um, I'm just reading through some more questions here. So, um, when do you need to decide which subjects to choose is a good question, because obviously I'm saying to try and meet the deadline of December the 14th to get your application in. So ideally, you're going to have a good idea then because you need to put your subject choices on your application form. Now, I'm conscious that lots of people may not really be absolutely clear about the three subjects they want to do. And so um, you go for um, an indication then and get your application in. But people do change their mind and, you know, as much as that is difficult in terms of planning a curriculum and a timetable, we absolutely understand that young people are making important decisions and they will change their mind. They may change their mind after a conversation with us in January. They may change their mind after um, their exams and when they get the results. They may change their mind after our induction day in July. So we're conscious of that, absolutely. And, um, and actually lots of students change their mind once they've started in September. Obviously, we want to minimise that as much as possible, which is why it's really important to do your research. But people do change their minds um, and we'll deal with that as it, as it happens. Um, so they need to decide as soon as possible, but we, we understand about people changing. Um, OK, would there be extra support for those with additional learning needs? Um, yeah, I mentioned early, early on, we have um, a great learning support um, department faculty in the school. Um, and although it's pretty rare to have kind of TA support in um, in sixth form lessons like you would um, lower down the school. We do have learning support available, so there is time available from the learning support faculty to sit with students after lessons, for example, and process what's happened to make sure they understand their notes or to help structure essays or to help with applications for university or for jobs, that sort of thing. Um, what else have we got? When to answer that one? What about technical qualifications and BTECs? What do you offer other than A levels? Yeah, we offer most of our offer is A levels. We do offer um, a, an, in, an increased number recently of other technical qualifications. So, music technology, health and social care, criminology, um, food, food science and nutrition. Probably going to forget one or two. Um, uh, applied science, um, uh, BTEC business. P Cambridge, I'm sure I'm going to forget one, so check the course booklet, which is on the website, I may mention that, um, and they're all in there. Um, somebody's asked about the percentage of external students that join school. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to, uh, percentage wise, it'll take me a minute to work out live uh, on this, um, probably. Maths wasn't my strong point, but each year we get somewhere between 20 and 50 um, external students. Um, a range of students so um, we've been really lucky in the last couple of years that we've had um, some international students here so currently we've got six Swiss, two Italian and two German, um, a similar thing last year that come just for a year um, and then we pick up a few students from schools in local areas so some from Harden, some from Abbeyfield, Corsham, Lavington, Beach and Cliff, a whole range of kind of local schools that um, we, we pick up a few students from so yeah somewhere between 20 and 50 each year. Um, so students, question for you, during the school, during a normal school week, rough, how much study time have you got? Um, well, I only have one, one full day of the week, which was actually today, so it's been a long day. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> it really depends on how much extra stuff you do, um, because otherwise you have quite a lot of free independent study time, especially with three um, A-levels, but then so, for example, we're both doing DV Gold, which takes up one lesson a week, and then an EQ um, and things like that. Um, so you do have a fair bit, but the amount you have kind of depends on how much, how you use it, and you know whether it's study time or not. Which, um, especially if you're thinking, does take study time. But um, yeah, a fair bit. Um, it just depends where you put it, whether it's into study time or extra curricular things. Um, I think also uh, with the whole um, COVID situation, we have missed 
some time off school and uh, the teachers and the time you've been really helpful in actually giving us uh, more lesson time. So although we have less independent time than we usually would in year 13, um, that time is spent catching up on stuff that we possibly could have missed in year one stuff. So yeah. Brilliant. I'll come back to you with another one in a second, Luke. Um, um, how many students in each lesson roughly? It, again, it really varies from lesson to lesson. Um, we have got um, one or two of our classes that have got 27, 28 in, is probably our biggest in something like criminology. Um, uh, but then we've got, uh, you know, class sizes of two or three, um, occasionally in much smaller subjects like music, where you tend not to recruit as many students because of the level that they need to be at for their instrument. Um, so it, there's a real variety. Um, on average, I would say it's probably somewhere between 15 and 20 um, average out across the uh, across the subjects. Um, student, I'll come back to you for the students that student question in a second. Will there be an opportunity for work experiences they've missed out due to the pandemic? As I mentioned in the um, in the talk and, and as Grace Neal has mentioned as well, careers and work experiences are really important to us. If we've got a great independent careers advisor, we um, talk to them about careers right from the beginning um, and we do still value work experience, which is why we have a week available for it at the end of year 12. Our plan is to try and work towards that happening um, next summer, but obviously, <laughs> you know, your guess is as good as mine. Um, as to where we're going to be at that point. Um, we are still going to talk to the students about it now, about planning for that, because actually lots of the students arrange their own work experience really, and that's done through connections and friends they have. We'll support all students to try and get work experience, but um, we are still going to encourage it. We're also now looking at lots of other, lots of providers have moved to online kind of work experience opportunities. Um, there's lots of virtual kind of um, presentations and work experience opportunities that lots of different industries are putting on, whether it's those who are applying to medicine or law, some of the industries and kind of areas are starting to put on their own um, online work experience because they know that students are not going, going to be able to access it in the same way. Um, so it's really important we are valuing that and, and working on that. Um, uh, it's a tricky question next, which is what A-levels are best if you don't know what to do as a career? Um, it, I suppose I would premise my answer by saying picking subjects that you really enjoy because you're going to have to study it for two years is the first thing. So enjoying it and hopefully being good at it um, and it would be my advice is to go for the stuff that we enjoy and you're good at. And because if you don't know what you want to do in the future, why restrict yourself to things that you think might get you a job, even though you don't know what job you want. So do the things that you love and do the things you're good at. Um, but some subjects do kind of keep more doors open, if you like. Um, so, you know, uh, those subjects that used to be known as facilitating subjects, um, so things like English, maths, science, languages, humanities, those things that universities will tend to accept for all sorts of different courses, um, those things um, obviously keep a broad uh, range of options available. Um, will people know who their teacher will be before applying for the course? Um, no is the simple answer. Um, they will know in July who their tutor is going to be. So at the July the induction day, they will find out who their tutor is, but they won't know um, in advance who their subject teachers are, um, largely because we might not know um, um, because of you know changes to staffing and stuff like that. And also, um, you know, I would say that students shouldn't be choosing their options based on um, the hope that they're going to get a particular teacher because you know, that teacher may be here in September, but then may leave for a promotion or for maternity leave or something at some point. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I know that people choose subjects because teachers make it come alive for them, um, but we can't guarantee that they're going to get a particular teacher, I'm afraid. Um, OK, let's go to the students again. Let's, uh, 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 a fairly swift one. What are your favourite subjects and why? We'll start with Luke this time. Um, um, so I'm currently studying biology, chemistry, maths and music um, and I actually love all of them. I know it's a bit of a corny answer <laughs> and I think I have to say that because I think Mr Spadell, our maths teacher, is watching this um, as I'm speaking. Um, but yeah, I love all of them. I think they all um, are challenging in their own way and I think they're all sort of stimulating their own way. Um, I think... It's a cop-out answer. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bit of a cop-out <laughs> but I genuinely do love all of them. I think um, they all add something different um, to my my general um, my general learning, so biology, I love physical sciences, it's my passion, it's what I want to go into. Um, I find chemistry fascinating, very challenging, 
um, and music is a passion of mine um, that I do outside of school as well. So that kind of goes um, goes alongside it. And then maths is um, maths is just maths. And I'm getting a message from uh, the current teacher saying I am right in saying maths is my favourite subject. So maths <laughs> is my favourite subject. <laughs> right, enough of the cop out. We've got to go for a subject. Um, I think mine would definitely be history. Um, I enjoy a lot of debate and heated arguments and a lot of my uh, teachers are really passionate um, about, watching, <laughs> about yeah, making a certain point or a certain argument um, and I love that interactive part of um, you know the lessons and the teaching so it's something I really enjoy and um, hopefully we'll see in the future. So. I'm really right. good at that. I, took, I really struggled with which one to drop last year. I changed during lockdown. I emailed my teachers being like, sorry, I, want to, I don't know, don't want to drop your subject anymore. But um, oh, I don't know. Uh, probably choose between psychology and PA. Probably, uh, probably, oh, I don't know. They're so different. <laughs> but we, you can say both. It's okay. Probably I'll PA let you because I'm better at PA. So <laughs> probably that one. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Obviously, none of them said sociology or criminology, which is what I teach, because they don't do it. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have said that. Um, uh, the sixth form booklet is available now on the website. So the prospectus and the book course booklet has been updated. That's available on the website, as is the application form. So as soon as we finish in a few minutes, you can get on there, read the information, start filling out your application forms. Um, if they don't get the grade for the A-level they want to do, what happens then? Um, it depends really, there, there, there's not a simple answer to that. So um, if um, somebody asked a question earlier, I think um, or I saw something about, um, are we going to be more understanding because of the disruption this year and stuff like that? Essentially, we're, we're quite understanding every year. We, we're an inclusive sixth form and we want people to be able to come into the sixth form. We don't want to put people on courses that they're going to um, you know, not succeed at, but we do want to give people a chance as much as possible. So. You know, if the entry requirement for maths is a seven, then um, the head of maths will usually give people a chance if they've just missed out. Um, but again, that's done on a case by case, by case basis. Um, and largely those entry criteria are there because we know that they, that's what kind of leads to success for those students. Um, so sometimes those students will be able to kind of be given an opportunity to, you know, try it out for a couple of weeks to see if they can actually cope with it and other times we will talk to them about kind of a, have a careers conversation about well, maybe you don't need that subject and is there a more appropriate subject that we can offer that actually would suit um, you better in terms of your results. Um, uh, six one book is available to answer that one that one's okay. Um, so the other question I think came up earlier is about um, applying to more than one place. Um, so in terms of what happens next, obviously I, I talked about doing your research and talking to teachers and all that sort of stuff. Um, Year 11s are in a really fortunate position at the moment in that they can apply to as many places as they want to. Um, so they can apply to as many school six forms and colleges as they want to at this point. They don't have to decide until results day. Now, um, and you know, with my uh, doing the right thing for the young people hat on, I would say that's absolutely what you should do. Is if you don't know what you want to do, apply to lots of places, keep your options open, and then choose us because we're the best. Um, uh, in all seriousness, you can do that. You keep your options open um, and decide after results day. So if you're not sure, then it makes sense to check out some options, um, but um, choose us in the end. Um, I think we're pretty much done. I'm just checking the feed that I'm kind of trying to read over the camera as well. Um, I know there have been a, a number of questions that perhaps we haven't answered that may be about a specific issue or kind of more specific to a particular personal family. Um, we will collate all the uh, questions and answers that have come in from today. Um, the video of the recording of this will um, be sent out on a link tomorrow um, and um, even to people perhaps in year 11 who, who, who weren't involved tonight will send it out to the year 11 so they can access it. Um, we'll collate all the the questions and answers so we can send that out too um, and if you have got any other questions that come up after today when I'm not sitting here um, talking to you live um, then obviously email sixform at shellandschool.co.uk and somebody will get back to you okay I just want to thank live while still on Luke and Grace and Eras for giving up their evening to be here um, and thank you all and if you've got any questions um, get in touch thank you so much for tuning in